This is Clifton Railway Bridge just outside of Penrith in Cumbria. It carries the West Coast Main Line over the M6 motorway and it's been replaced in a £60 million project led by Network Rail alongside partners such as National Highways. In this video today we'll have a look at the background of the scheme as to why the bridge has been replaced. We'll have a look at what preparation works has already taken place including the building of the new bridge on site alongside the motorway and we will have a look at the diversion routes for both the railway and the road while the bridge is actually removed. The bridge that is being replaced was built in 1968 as part of the Penrith Bypass which is now incorporated into the M6. The bridge has reached the end of its usable life. The new bridge is going to be installed over two weekends, with the first one obviously being demolition of the existing bridge. That's going to be on January the 2nd. And they're going to achieve this by using multiple excavators. Similar to this video that I've put up on screen now, this is part of a video that I filmed in 2024 on the M62 at Castleton. If you want to see that video, leave a link to it in the top right of the screen now, and I'll also leave a link in the description so you can have a look at what work may be taking place at Penrith. The work at Penrith has been taking place for over a year now. It involved some substantial site clearance, including building this dedicated slip road off the motorway to prevent lots of traffic on local roads. This allowed the new bridge to be built on site. We're going to have a good close-up look at the new bridge shortly, but before we do that, let's have a look at a bit more prep work. Minimise the risk of damage to the existing bridge supports. Because I think the bridge is going to be lifted onto them existing ones. Network Rail have put these shipping containers around them. This is looking southbound. So we've got the southbound carriageway, the M6 on the right there. You can see every pier has got the shipping containers around it. Similar situation on the northbound side. Where you've got these containers just protecting the piers, etc. So taking a look at the new bridge now, like I said, it's been built on site. They've put as much onto this new bridge as possible before it gets lifted into position. And got an overview of the new bridge now. As you can see, Network Rail have put as much in, pot in place as possible before they even move it into situ. So you can see the OLE, the overhead line equipment is already established on it. The bridge is going to be moved into position using these, what it's sat on at the moment. These are self-propelled modular transporters, or as Network Rail call them, SPMTs. Each one of these has 150 wheels, all computer controlled, and the ground has had to be specially strengthened to take the weight of the SPMTs and the bridge to get it safely across onto the motorway. Obviously, disruption is going to happen. Despite all the prep work, you can't just shut the main north to south motorway on the west coast of the country and the railway at the same time and expect nothing to go wrong. Disruption is inevitable. The railway will be closed in total between Oxenholm, Lake District and Carlisle for a total of two weeks. Various TOCs, train operating companies, have got things in place. Some are using shuttle buses between the two locations and Avante are running some services of the iconic South Carlisle Railway, taking in Rivalhead, etc.
moving on to the roads now, the M6 is going to be closed between Junction 39 at Sharp and 40 at Penrith in both directions from 8pm on Friday the 2nd of January to 5am on Monday the 5th of January. And the weekend after the same times, 8pm on Friday the 9th of January to 5am on Monday the 12th of January. Now we've got a normal diversion here coming off at 39 going up to 40 on the northbound. When I say normal diversion, that's a standard route of coming off the M6 at 39 and following the old A6 through Sharp to get back on at Penrith. Southbound is a little bit more of a drive. I think they want to try and avoid the traffic lights at Ebank Bridge where the narrow bridge is over the river. So the southbound diversion is coming off at Penrith, following the A66, down to the A685, through Curvy Stephen and back on at 38 at T-Bear. Now, the issue with that one is, that's not suitable for trucks. If you're driving a truck, it's an even bigger diversion. The HGV southbound diversion is off at 40, along the A66, to Scotch Corner, then the A1, over to Leeds, across the 62, and back up. Yep, going from one side of the country to the other. It is what it is, isn't it, with that one. Now, National Highways do accept that that is a massive diversion, so they are hoping subject to traffic levels in the evenings to be able to open the A6 both ways to northbound and southbound traffic provided it's not too busy. We'll finish this video with a flight over Clifton Village. I will try and get up on one of the weekends when the closures is going on and the work's taking place. But it is quite a drive and it all depends on the weather as well for the drone, etc. If you can, like, hype and subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. And I'll catch you again in the next video. Thanks again, everyone.